However you manage the IT and broader technology needs of your business, if all you focus on day to day is maintaining and securing what you've always had in place, there's probably extra productivity or profitability you're leaving on the table that could be delivered by taking a different approach to leveraging technology. In this video, I'm going to look at some areas where, as a small business owner or leader, you might consider focusing your attention to drive more value from technology and ultimately to deliver better tools to your team members to excel in their jobs. A couple of months ago, I published this video highlighting how small businesses can outsource their IT management to a managed services provider. And for the vast majority, this is really good advice. But I also highlighted how under these sorts of arrangements, in general, you're not paying for someone who is going to be constantly thinking about how to use technology more innovatively to make your business better. Many MSPs quite rightly compete on the quality of the help desk issue resolution and their ability to secure your IT environment from predominantly outside threats. Foundationally, these are the services you need to ensure your technology doesn't blow up in your face one day. But it also doesn't include a lot of focus on things to move you from where you're at to where you would optimally be in driving your business with technology. However, exactly the same can be true even if you staff your IT operation in-house, as ultimately this is a question of how you choose to invest in resources, not about just where those resources are coming from. Just turning on the IT spigot doesn't mean that you are watering every opportunity or project you could to get the most potential upside. Developing a culture that embraces technology innovation can be really hard. You need someone or optimally a group of people to drive that way of thinking. You need expertise either from in-house staff or your existing outsourced IT provider or a specialist consultant like me to support you. And you need time and resources to plan, to learn, to try stuff out, and even sometimes to fail in order to get to the best end destination. Too often, technology development is planned out as huge leaps. You suffer with a system that doesn't meet your needs for too long, and then commence a project to buy something new with great fanfare. But without a foundation of a culture that makes it easy to embrace this sort of change, such projects can be slow, poorly received, and expenses and often they just don't deliver what you're looking for. To get the best out of technology, you need to build on a strong foundation of security and compliance, but in the minds of your team members and of your leadership, this shouldn't be all that technology is about. So with the goal of embracing technology innovation in mind, here are three areas where you might focus your attention to improve your tool set and your culture alongside each other. When you buy a product like Microsoft 365, from one perspective, you immediately get a whole bunch of value. But from another, you start wasting tons of money. As in general, unless you work at it, you're paying for a bunch of functionality that in many cases would be beneficial to you that no one in your business touches. And it's not just Microsoft 365. This adoption-related failure to launch is a common problem with all but the most basic, singularly focused apps. I often work with businesses where they are literally seeking help to buy capabilities they already own in other software, but simply no one has figured out how to use them. For Microsoft 365, there's a whole website at adoption.microsoft.com that is focused exclusively on helping businesses and their users to get the best value out of their products. And this definitely isn't just for people in technical roles. To get the best out of these platforms requires all types of users to be engaged and to have people who champion the product or different aspects of it across the organization. Microsoft even has different communities involved in its adoption efforts. There are user groups or even regular Teams meetings that those who want to explore these products can get involved in to read about new features or even have them demonstrated by people on the Microsoft product teams. The level of resourcing that Microsoft puts towards these sorts of community engagement efforts shows how seriously they take their commitment to giving everyone the best opportunity to get the most out of their investment in the products. If you roll out a good Microsoft adoption program in your organization, there's also a set of secondary benefits. 
Of course, you can get more value out of your Microsoft 365 investment and your team is more productive as a result. But it also embeds a culture and cadence of information sharing in your business that can be leveraged for other sorts of technology innovation or even other sorts of change management across your organization. It can serve to empower team members to share best practices, to focus on doing better by engaging with what's possible, and to engage with problems or issues in a more collaborative, solution-oriented manner. AI is everywhere right now. And if you haven't noticed this, then perhaps you've been living under a rock, or perhaps you haven't subscribed to this channel. By the way, if you haven't already, please drop this video a like and hit that subscribe button so you can stay informed on issues like this one. Tools like Microsoft 365 Copilot, a link to this video is below if you need more information on this, have the potential to radically alter how we do work. There is an incredible opportunity to augment the work our teams do with the astonishing capabilities of AI while enriching their working lives by allowing them to focus more time and energy on more fulfilling work. These tools also have the ability to surface capabilities of your existing software that your team members may not have been using. How well this will work is yet to be seen, but the potential is amazing for AI to understand what someone is trying to achieve and then surfacing the right information and tooling to get it done. If you're not already thinking about AI in your business, then this is a good time to start. You need to be considerate of the issues that may come up in Teams members' minds and check out this video in the links below if you need more information on that. But if you can keep things positive, it's an opportunity to embrace a good culture of technology change. Tools like Power Automate can open up possibilities for efficiency that just a handful of years ago would have been completely out of reach to everyone except those in the biggest enterprises. The possibilities of automating processes with Power Automate or building apps with Power Apps or even designing dashboards with Power BI can be exciting and a good opportunity to inject a drive for technology improvement through your business. Too often we come into a role with a set of tools that are okay but not quite what you're looking for. I personally do a lot of home improvement projects and I generally use DeWalt power tools. And this goes right the way back to my preference when I was building theater sets in college. Now, there's nothing objectively better about DeWalt tools than Bosch or Makita, but people have their preferences. And the same is true for every application, every CRM, every web-based app you deploy in your business. Tools like Power Automate and Power Apps literally give every employee the ability to structure the tooling of core parts of their work to their liking, while delivering exactly the needed output and doing so efficiently. You give your team the parts and they can build a DeWalt, a Bosch, a Makita, or even a Ryobi if they want. But embracing this as part of your culture where your focus is on giving each person the best tools to do their best work, rather than molding everyone into exactly the same way of doing everything, can be incredibly liberating and embed in your organization the potential to do far more with technology. I said I'd cover three topics today, but this is a bit of a bonus one. I've made videos about the great potential tools like Microsoft 365 have to enable asynchronous work before. See the links below. But ultimately, the more technologically enabled a business operations are, the more feasible it is to do well with this in the long term. Since the heyday of remote work just after the pandemic, feelings about this have changed a little, both for workers and for their employers. But it is definitely the case that this manner of working enabled lots of small businesses to extend their reach for talent in ways they hadn't been able to before. But it goes without saying that success in this sort of working requires an appropriate culture as well as an appropriate technology. And so those businesses with a culture that embraces the potential of technology are far more equipped to adapt their working to see the upside of these opportunities than those who do not. Too often we forget the culture element that is so connected to the successful deployment of new technology. In fact, in my opinion, as technologies mature and as technology natives make up more and more of our workforce, this aspect is becoming all the more important. All four of the items that we've looked at today have something important in common. And that is they are areas that balance the benefit between your business and the people who are working in your business. And I think this is incredibly important. 
giving people the right tools so they can do a good job, so they can be incredibly productive, but also so they can feel valued and they can feel fulfilled in what they do, so that they can have the flexible arrangements that allow them to have a good work-life balance. These things are all important and should all be in your thinking when you're considering how to deploy technology in your organization. I think joining these thoughts together is becoming all the more important for all different types of organizations, from very big to very small and everything in between, because the profile of what workers are looking for and what we're expecting of those workers has changed over time and will continue to change as we see things like AI become dominant in the types of tools that we're seeing in businesses. What do you think? What's your experience with driving these kinds of changes in your organization? Tell me about the good and the bad. Leave me a note in the comments below. Hopefully, this has given you some good starting points to think about. I appreciate you watching and hope to see you back here next time. Until the next video, bye bye.